This slideshow demonstrates the Gram-Schmidt orthonormalization process. This slideshow is on the Gram-Schmidt orthonormalization process. Our objective is to demonstrate the process with two examples, one using vectors with the dot product as the inner product, and another example using polynomials with the integral as the inter product. The point of these notes is to demonstrate how the Gram-Schmidt process is accomplished with not only vectors but functions as well. The steps for the Gram-Schmidt process follow from this theorem. Every non-zero finite dimensional inner product space has an orthonormal basis. We'll begin with some identifications. We're going to let capital V be any non-zero finite dimensional inner product space. And we'll suppose that small u is a sequence of vectors that form a basis in this capital V inner product space. It suffices to show that capital V has an orthogonal basis since the vectors in the orthogonal basis can be normalized to produce an orthonormal basis for capital V. The following steps will produce an orthogonal basis which we'll label with small v for capital V. The process for finding such a basis is as follows. Our first step in this process is to take our first basis vector, which we label with small u1, and set that equal to our first vector in our orthogonal set, which we labeled with v1. So we essentially set v1 equal to u1. Our second step is to consider the difference between our u2 vector, which is our second vector in our basis, with the orthogonal projection of u2 onto v1, and that formula is given here at step 2. The difference between these two will be a vector that will be orthogonal to v1, and, that, and this is what generates the vector v2, our second vector in our orthogonal set for our inner product space of capital V. Our third step in the Gram-Schmidt process is to consider the current u vector from the basis and subtract off all of the orthogonal projections that this u vector shares with all the previously generated v vectors. So when you generate v3, you're going to take the difference between u3 and the sum of the orthogonal projection of u3 with v1 and u3 with v2. So you add those two orthogonal projections together and you subtract that sum from the current vector in your basis set. This is what will generate the new orthogonal vector. And you do this for each and every vector in the basis set until you have all of the vectors used up. Our fourth and final step in the Gram-Schmidt process is to obtain an orthonormal basis. And to do that, you simply take each of the v vectors that you generated, these are the orthogonal vectors, and you can simply divide out their magnitudes, which automatically normalizes them. And this is how you generate the orthonormal basis. Now let's see the Gram-Schmidt process in action. We're going to consider three vectors from R3. We're going to let u1 be the vector 1, 1, 1. We're going to let u2 be the vector 0, 1, 1. And we're going to let u3 be the vector 0, 0, 1. And we're going to apply the Gram-Schmidt process to obtain orthonormal vectors. Our first step is to set v1 equal to u1. So our first vector in our orthogonal set will be the vector 1, 1, 1, which is the same as u1. Our second step is to consider the difference between u2 and the orthogonal projection of u2 onto v1. Now the formula is given here for us to compute this little v2, which is our second vector in our orthogonal uh, set. 
So let's determine the inner product of u2 and v1. This is simply the dot product between the two vectors. The arithmetic is done here and we can see the result is 2. This will be the numerator of the fraction that's given in our formula. Now we need to determine the norm of v1 and we're going to need to square that as well so we get the denominator of our fraction. Now the norm squared is simply the dot product between our v1 vectors and this arithmetic is also shown and we simply get 3. Hence our fraction becomes 2 thirds. We may proceed with the rest of the calculation now and v2 will simply be the difference between u2 which is 0 1 1 vector minus 2 thirds times the v1 vector which is 1 1 1 and the result of that is shown here as negative 2 thirds 1 third and 1 third as the components. Step 3 is going to be us continuing this process. This is where we start getting into that summation formula that was given in our general process here. So here it's expanded out for the u3 vector. Now what we see here is that we have v3, our orthogonal vector, is going to be equal to u3, that's our original basis vector, minus the orthogonal projection of u3 onto v1, and then minus again the orthogonal projection of u3 onto v2. So what we're going to do is we're going to compute the inner products and the norms like we did before, and the details are shown here. So the inner product between u3 and v1 is simply 1, and the norm squared of v1 is given as 3, and we computed that value in step 2. So 1 over 3 is going to be our first fraction multiplying the v1 vector in our formula. Continuing on to determine the value of the second fraction in our formula, the one that's multiplying the v2 vector, we go ahead and take the inner product of u3 and v2. Now for this example, this amounts to taking the dot product between the two vectors, which as we can see here results in one third. The squared norm of the v2 vector, again, is just the dot product of the v2 vectors, and the arithmetic is shown here, and that yields a two-thirds value. Now that we have the inner products and norms computed, we can continue with the computation of v3. Now remember, v3 is the vector that we're trying to get. So the arithmetic is shown here in the formulas, and everything is simplified down to giving the vector of 0, negative 1 half, and positive 1 half as the components of the v3 vector. This is our third and final orthogonal vector for our basis. Our fourth and final step in the process is to normalize each of the v vectors that we've generated. So here we can see that the v1 vector is normalized by dividing out the square root of 3. The v2 vector will be normalized by dividing out by the square root of 2 thirds, which is essentially the same thing as multiplying by the square root of 3 halves. The v third vector is normalized by dividing by the square root of 2. So the orthonormal vectors are what are labeled here as q1, q2, and q3. And these are the vectors that the Gram-Schmidt process generates. In this next example, we will use polynomials and the integral to demonstrate the Gram-Schmidt orthonormalization process. So suppose we consider uh, a basis in the space of polynomials of degree 2 or less, that is the vectors 1, x, and x squared, and the inner product we'll use will be defined as this integral uh, from negative 1 to 1 as the product of the two functions together. And we're going to apply the Gram-Schmidt orthonormalization process to this basis. First, let's make some denotions. We're going to let the number 1 be represented by the vector u1, the variable x represented by the vector u2, and x squared to be represented by the vector u3. And the Gram-Schmidt process starts off by setting the first basis in our orthogonal basis set equal to the first vector in our basis set here. So in this case, our first orthogonal vector will simply be the number 1. Our second step 
is to define the second vector in the orthogonal basis as the difference between the second vector in our basis and the orthogonal projection of that second vector onto the first vector that we just generated in step one. So in this case, we're going to take u2 and minus the inner product divided by the square of the norm times v1. And when we do this, we have x minus 0, which results in x. The details of these computations are given below. And here we can see the inner product evaluated through the integral, giving us a 0 value. And the norm of the first vector in the orthogonal basis is also provided here through the integral, giving us a value of 2. And since the numerator is 0, the entire fraction is 0, just leaving v2 equal to u2. Our third step is to generate the v3, the last vector in the orthogonal basis set. And the formula is given here as the third vector in the original basis set minus the orthogonal projection of that u3 vector onto v1 and then minus again that u3 vector onto v2. And the details are provided here as far as the computations go. So we ended up with x squared minus one-third as a result for the vector of v3. So below we can see the inner product between u3 and v1 as defined through the integral, and we get two-thirds. The norm of that v1 vector squared is equal to two that we computed before. And then we go through and do the inner product of u3 and v2 through the integral, and we get a value of zero. The norm of v2 uh, squared, again, is done through this inner product, giving us a value of two-thirds. Our last step in the process is to normalize these v vectors by dividing out their magnitudes. So we have q1 as the normalized vector of v1, and that is equal to 1 over square root 2. Uh, q2, which is the normalized form of the vector v2, which is x divided by the square root of two-thirds, and the q3 vector, the normalized version of v3, will simply be 1 divided by the square root of 8 over 45 times the v3 vector, which results in square root 5 divided by the product of 2 and square root 2, and then all of that is multiplied by 3x squared minus 1. On this slide, we show the details of computing the norm for the v3 vector. And again, it's done through the integral, and the details are supplied here so that you can see where the 8 over 45 value comes from. This marks the end of this slideshow presentation, and I hope that it was helpful to you. Thank you for your time and attention.